I'd step around here and get behind the table. Good evening to all of you and Eddie Paul here. And as I have said, I wanted to do a short video on how to take communion. Many of you already know how. You've been served communion time and time again. But yet there are some who have never taken communion. So today I just wanted to make this video to demonstrate what one can do at home without leaving the house. So number one, you're gonna need your Bible. Number two, you're gonna need a piece of bread, or at least that's what I use. Some people use crackers, whatever. Uh, empty cup, and I don't have those little cups they serve you at churches, and some grape juice. Uh, your brand, it's your choice. But I want you to find a quiet place, a quiet time, get your mind on the Lord, shut off your computer, your cell phone, your TV. If you can do it when the kids are at school, there's no noise, you're all by yourself, maybe in the kitchen, whatever, or at the coffee table in your living room, doesn't matter because God is omnipresent. So doing it in a church building doesn't make it any better than doing it right where you are. So first of all, let me say that I've got just a slice of bread. I did cut off the crust, but what I normally do is just take a pair of scissors because it's so much easier and just cut it in strips. Depends on how many people are gonna participate in communion. Just very easily cut it in a strip. And I'm not going to do all of them because it's just me. But just take a strip and cut off a piece. I'm going to cut off several. And as you can see, I've got several pieces of bread. And the object is... Just when the time comes, you choose a piece of bread, you'll pick up your cup, you'll eat the bread, then you'll drink the cup and we'll have prayer. But just so you'll know what I'm doing, just take a little bit of grape juice. I've never been satisfied with the little bitty cups they give you at church. Uh, this wasn't enough to wash the bread down so the articles of communion, the cup, the dish, the cho choice of bread, they really don't matter because all of this is in remembrance of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what communion is all about. It is he who went to the cross and shed his blood to pay for your sins and mine. So now that we've got the bread, we've got a little cup of grape juice. Let's take our Bibles and turn with me, please, to first. Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And I'm going to be reading verses 23 through 30. But before you take communion, I charge you, pray, pray before you take communion. Make sure your heart is right before God. And if there's any unrepented sin. Get it out now. Here's why. There's a warning in the Word of God, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. There is a warning about the dangers of taking communion unworthily. So hear me out, and I'm going to read uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and I'm going to read verses 27 through 30, First, for those of you who have never taken it, for those of you who have not taken it in a while, I want you to hear what the Word of God says concerning communion. 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 27. The Bible says, Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. 
But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep or are dead. Did you hear what the word of God says? You don't take communion lightly. Take it seriously. So before I read the communion verses, you and me need to take a little time out and pray and make sure that whatever there is in our life that has not been covered in prayer already, let's cover it now, lest we take communion unworthily. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I humbly come before you. <laughs> I don't want to take communion unworthily. Lord, the Bible says we all sin and come short of the glory of God. Every one of us. Eddie Paul too. Father, we fall short of what we should be because oftentimes we, re we respond out of our flesh and not according to the word of God. So, Father, right now, before we take communion, I ask you in Jesus' name to search my heart, Lord, and forgive me of any and all things that are not pleasing in your sight. Father, with the shed blood of Jesus, wash me whiter than snow in your sight. Others will not see me like you do. But Father, right now, I ask you to search my heart. And if there's anything there that ought not be, Father, I pray that you would cleanse me from all unrighteousness according to your word. For the word of God says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Father, cleanse me now that I will be worthy of, to participate in communion. For your name's sake and for your glory, in Jesus' name we pray. <laughs> in Jesus' name, amen and amen. I take communion seriously. I think you should take it seriously. Too often in church buildings, they let everybody, anybody take communion not reading the verses I already have, that you are drinking damnation to your soul if you take communion unworthily. You are guilty of the body of Christ if you do, and you don't need that. So make sure that you pray before you take communion, get your heart right before God, Trust him to do his word in that if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. So here we go. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse uh, 23. Let me wipe my eyes so I can see what I'm doing. And here's what it says. 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed. Now you remember Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane. Judas, one of his disciples, betrayed him for a kiss and 30 pieces of silver. And Judas surrendered Jesus to the Roman soldiers that night in the garden. And before the garden event, this is when they took communion. That same night, I'll read it again. 
For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Now at this point, you should already have a piece of bread in one hand, and I'll pick up the cup in a moment. But when you read this verse of scripture where he says, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do, <laughs> do it because you remember what I have done for you. I gave you my body. I shed my blood for you. And now in remembrance of this, you take this bread and eat. After the same manner, also he took the cup when he had sucked, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So the grape juice represents the blood of Jesus. And as Jesus had earlier said, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you will have no part of me. So that's what communion does in a sense. You partake of the bread, which represents the bread of heaven. You drink the juice, which represents the blood of Jesus that was shed for you upon the cross. So he says, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do... As often as you drink it, and there's no set times that you should drink communion, whether it be once a month, once every six months, once a year. You let the Lord lead you, because if you do it routinely, it doesn't mean anything. And if you're not careful, you'll take it when you're not right with God, and you'll drink damnation to yourself and be uh, sickly among you or weak or sleep. One more time, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. So take and drink. You've tasted the bread. You've tasted the grape juice. And now let's read one more verse. Verse 26 1 Corinthians 11 and 26, after you've had the bread, after you've had the juice, here's what it says. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he come. In taking communion, you are reminding yourself and you are reminding those around you the price that Jesus paid with his flesh, with his blood to save you from your sins. It's a serious thing. Please don't take it lightly. Pray before you take communion and after you've taken communion, I recommend you offer a prayer of thanks. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the word of God that tells us about communion, that we can participate with a piece of bread and a glass of juice in the death of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave his flesh and his blood that we might be saved. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And from henceforth, Lord, I pray that we will walk worthy 
of your name, Jesus. Jesus. It's all about him. Gail's resting, so I went ahead to do the video so we wouldn't wait anymore. Thank you for watching this video. And it would be wonderful if you could share it with friends and family so they too will know how to take communion and hopefully they also will take communion. So until our next video, for Cindy Gail, Eddie Paul, we love you and God bless.